Hi, I'm Eric Hanselman, uh, Director of Professional Services with LeoStream, and I'm going to be talking today about VDI security. Uh, what I want to address is both some of the misconceptions, preconceptions, and really talk about the practical aspects of virtual desktops and what you need to think about from a security perspective. There's a lot of background from virtualization in general, a lot of you know, general ghosts out there about VDI security break out and all the other problems that, that could potentially present themselves. What I'm going to talk about today is rather than all of the possible problems, really the more probable issues from security and what you need to think about when you make the move towards virtual desktops. We've come from a background of physical desktops where users were able to actually lay their hands on the desktop systems. And from an authentication standpoint that made all of our lives really simple. Users had access to the systems, they controlled the systems they were working with, it was easy for them to manage access to them. It was also easy for us as administrators to take some potential shortcuts in giving local access uh, accounts to those systems and, and making our lives a little easier. It meant that in large environments there were some shortcuts we could take to manage it. When you make the move to a virtual desktop infrastructure, you're now moving those desktops out of the end user's hands and into a centralized infrastructure. There are huge advantages here when you start thinking about a lot of the data access, data loss, and the compliance issues that are associated uh, with managing a, a large environment where you're distributing data to your various users, where you have to be able to manage who has access to that data, who's using it, and where does it eventually end up. The great advantage about VDI from a compliance perspective is now you move all the data from the end user's desktops where it had been, into a centralized environment where you can control who gains access to it, where you can log access, where you can control authentication, all the great things about being able to manage loss and compliance. You get to move away from all the potential problems like lost laptops, uh, users dumping things onto USB without logging, um, all those potential problems that you had from back in the days of having to deal with independent desktops uh, where users were able to actually hang on to the data themselves. VDI can solve a lot of problems and make your audit days a lot simpler uh, by being able to take that data and centralize it and manage it. The difficulty though is that when you start moving all that data into a centralized infrastructure, your users are now coming from remote systems to be able to get to it. Now every user is a remote access user and you need to make sure you manage authentication in ways that make sense and that still give you the level of security that you want to be able to deliver uh, to make sure that that access is still protected. One of the biggest problems that we find in a, for a lot of our customers is that as they make that move, they suddenly start to discover a lot of the authentication um, hitches that were hidden by users being able to actually physically get to their systems. Now when you're doing authentication of users, you've got to be able to manage the way in which you integrate with your authentication environments. So if you've got a complicated authentication environment, your VDI infrastructure's got to be able to handle those complications and make those complications invisible and seamless to your end users. They've got to be able to get to their desktops the same way they were able to get to their desktops back when they had physical access, and they need to be able to do that from a remote environment. This is one of the places where a flexible brokering environment can really be a big help. Being able to manage the way in which users are interconnecting with those desktops, the task really falls to your connection broker to be able to manage how they authenticate users, you know, what the complexities are, and how they apply policies to the way in which users are being delivered to desktops. Because now in VDI, you've got to be able to integrate user access and desktop authentication all within one system. The big advantage here is that now you've got the ability to be able to take that authentication environment and roll it into the same way your users are actually being delivered access to your desktops. That means that at the end of the day, your users, uh, you're guaranteeing that only those users who've been authenticated through your authentication environment are actually getting to those desktops. So controlling access can be a whole lot simpler. You're also in controlling access delivering the tools to report on who got to those desktops and when they got to them. So users coming in from thin clients are coming in through the brokering environment, getting to those desktops, and need to be able to gain access both to the connection that they're using to get there, so when they're coming in from that thin client and getting into the desktop itself, 
but they're also being authenticated against whichever of the authentication domains are being used to grant those users access. So if you have a complicated uh, authentication domain, you need to make sure that you can put together authentication policies that cover it. It's a good idea to make sure as you're looking towards larger scale VDI deployments that your authentication environment uh, can be effectively handled by the brokering infrastructure that you're putting in place to be able to, to work with it. Uh, when you set up uh, your brokering environment, you want to make sure that you've got the ability to bring together whatever the domain environments are with which you're working. In most large enterprises today, authentication environments have grown, whether or not it's in an organic fashion or through mergers and acquisitions, uh, into a little more complicated space than, than the ideal best practices might dictate. What that means is that there are usually uh, some creative solutions that are necessary to be able to integrate different types of problems like separated domains, active directory forests that aren't fully integrated, individual domains that may not have trusts established between them. So when you start looking at how you're going to authenticate this whole range of users who are coming into that environment, you need to make sure that you've got policy capabilities to be able to bring those disparate authentication spaces all into one place to be able to integrate them and through that deliver desktops to your end users. Brokering environments as a result have to be flexible enough to be able to bring together whether or not it's different Active Directory domains, your e-directory domains, whatever that happens to be, the, the sources of all of that information need to be able to be flexibly integrated so that your users can get to those desktops at the end of the day. When users are integrating uh, the desktops, when they're actually making that connection, the broker winds up handling all the credentialing that's necessary to be able to get to both determine user identity, communicate it back into your authentication information, uh, your authentication infrastructure, and then be able to deliver a desktop because of that. One of the big issues with remote user authentication is that most organizations want to move towards a more sophisticated means of doing user authentication because your users are coming in remotely, because you have the option of having users arrive at the desktop from a lot of different sources, you may want to be able to look at things like multi-factor authentication, smart cards, any of a range of more secure mechanisms to make sure that you're really identifying those users and that the folks that you're delivering desktops to are exactly who they say they are. Again, you want to make sure that your authentication infrastructures can support those mechanisms and that they can integrate with the brokering environment that's delivering that to those desktop environments. Once you've got the, the ability to be able to go uh, grab the appropriate user credentials, authenticate them correctly, you're on your way towards managing the way in which uh, desktops get delivered to users and, and the security with which those desktops are, are actually being made available. At the end of the day, with a little planning and a little thought, you can deliver very effective, secure solutions that give you significant advantages over the old days of physical desktops, give you a lot of happy days when you get to the point of actually being able to do compliance, and make your lives as administrator a whole lot simpler. A little work up front can make your, uh, make your life down the road a whole lot easier. Thanks for spending time with us. I'm Eric Hanselman with LeoStream. See us on the web at www.leostream.com.